Hi everyone, James Beck here and it's time for some more VGC 2015 Battles from the Doubles Battles File Ladder. Today will be the last episode of the I Dare You Pokemon I Dare You series for this month of April. We are, basically if you guys don't know what Pokemon I Dare You is, it's a series where you guys get to pick a bunch of Pokemon ideas and then I pick one at random, build a team around that and use it on the last week of the month. On battle spot competitively. So the winner of the last Pokemon I Dare You was Ursaring. And here we'll be finally finishing off the team. We have Ludicolo, Mawak, Cresselia, Ursaring, Chandelure, and Hariyama. I finally actually decided to switch up the item on Cresselia. I forgot in the past couple of uh, videos to give it the Rocky Helmet. But I actually did give it the Rocky Helmet this time. So let's see how this is going to go. We're going to find two battles and see how we do. Okay, our first opponent today will be Rev from Spain, 7021 rating. I feel like I faced him before, but I don't remember when. But the team is so obvious. We got Thunders, Kangaskhan, Heatran, Cresselia, Amoongus, and Lander. So, Amoongus is going to be an annoying Pokemon, but I feel like as long as I get rid of the Kangaskhan, Ludicolo just does fantastic here. I wish I had a Salt Vest, but the Life Form might help. So, the Mega Pokemon of this team will obviously be Kangaskhan. I'm kind of wondering if that's going to be Offensive Funders with Life Orb or Bulky Support. I'd probably guess Bulky Support from this team. Of course, this team could possibly be Trick Room. We got Cresselia, Kangaskhan, Heatran, and Amoongus. Even Landris can benefit in Trick Room if played right. So, what would I want? I wish I had Safety Goggles on the Chandelure. I have Focus Sash instead. Which might not be the best call here. I think Hariyama's a safe lead. Hariyama plus Cresselia. I don't like Mawa on this. Mawa doesn't seem to do that great. So I'm going to bring Ursaring. And I'll bring Ludicolo on the back. The reason I'm not bringing Mawa is. Sure Intimidate is useful for the Kangaskhan. And I guess the Landers. But Landers won't be as big of a deal. But. The reason I'm not bringing Mawa is. Just because you got the Heatran and Amoongus and Cresselia and those Pokemon, Mawa does not want to face, especially uh, Cresselia or Amoongus, that might carry the Rocky Helmet item. I'm kind of wondering which one it will be. I guess the Cresselia would have Citrus Berry and the Amoongus would have the Rocky Helmet from my perspective. Gonna lead Hariyama and Cresselia standard lead against my opponents Kangaskhan and Landris. That's completely fine by me. Landris is going to get the Intimidate off, which is fine. Which is fine. Now, if I were my opponent, Kangaskhan's either probably going to go for a Protect, not Protect, Fake Out or a Switch Out. The Landis is most likely going to U-Turn. The play my opponent will probably make is Fake Out Cresselia and U-Turn it. So I'm actually just going to go straight for the Close Combat to Cresselia. Try it, I mean Kangaskhan, try to get rid of it quickly. Except that Trick Room. I'm really not scared. If I can get rid of Kangaskhan, it's a huge threat out of the way. So that will be excellent. And also my Cresselia's Rocky Helmet. Even with the Intimidate from the Landers, I think a close combat after Rocky Helmet damage should get the knockout. So he is going to go for the Fake Out into the Hariyama slot. Interesting. Will we see a U-turn into Moongus? That will be a great play by my opponent. But no, he's going to go for a knockoff into Cresselia. That's going to take Rocky Helmet damage. So we see knockoff from this Landers. Interesting. So that probably means it's not the standard... Uh, choice Scarf Landers, you see, usually it's a Salt Vest that carried a knockoff, so have to keep that in mind. Of course, here I'd expect my opponent to switch out. He could go for Sucker Punch, but I really highly doubt it. Um, Kangaskhan revealed Fake Out, so probably does not carry Protect. We could see the Moongus switch out for the Kangaskhan, which is what I'm thinking. Which is why I want to double target this uh, this Landers with a knockoff Ice Beam. I feel like that's going to do a lot of damage. Knockoff will knock off the, probably the Assault Vest. I would really assume it's Assault Vest. He is going to switch out Kangaskhan. Let's see if it's a Moongus. Oh, it's going to be Cresselia. Oh, I could have got a knockoff, but I'm fine. Knockoff is going to connect with his Landers. Knocking off the Yachi Berry, not even the... Assault Vest or Choice Band, but the Ice Beam should knock out at that range. Yes, it does. So I'm completely fine with how that turn came up. 
as it's now Hariyama, Cresselia, I'm up, but Kangaskhan's gonna come in, and he's probably gonna go for Fake Out, however, I really don't want any Pokemon to take a Fake Out. He's probably gonna Fake Out Psychic that slot, but I really just don't see any of my Pokemon uh, doing well. I expect his last Pokemon to be Heatran, because he has no way to counter Mawile without that Landris. So I'm going to Psy Shock and just try to get some damage on this Kangaskhan. He's going to go for the Fake Out into the Hariyama, which is understandable, but understand I can't do anything about that. I do have Citrus Berry, which is going to help Hariyama quite a bit. So let's see if Kang with this Cresselia can knock out with Psychic. I don't think so. I'm very specially bulky, but it's possible. The Psy Shock is going to happen onto the Kangaskhan. We're going to see the Psychic from the Cresselia. will just knock out. It might put me in Sucker Punch range. That's probably Sucker Punch range. But even if it's Sucker Punch range, I kind of just want to go for Helping Hand Close Combat. I feel like he has Heatran in the back. He's going to be forced to Sucker Punch something, and if it's my Hariyama, I get a free switch out into whatever I want. He is going to go for the Sucker Punch into Hariyama, unfortunately. Probably should have made the better call. And Hariyama is able to loot the first one, but not the second one. Let's see what the Cresselia goes for. If it goes for Trick Room, I might be in trouble. Yep, there's the Trick Room. Huh. This got interesting. I'm gonna go out into Ursaring, because... Well, I could've got into Ludicolo, but I feel like there's no point. So I feel like he's just gonna try to get rid of this Cresselia right away. With a return. And I don't know what he wants to do with his other Cresselia. Because Trick Room is so obvious, but then again, he could return the Ursaring and go for Trick Room. So I'm going to Helping Hand Facade this Kangaskhan, hope for a knockout, and hope that I survive the return. Somehow he sets up the Trick Room for me, so I don't have to do any work. That's basically my logic. If he returns Cresselia, that's fine. I Facade the Kangaskhan for the knockout. If he returns Ice Ring, I think I'll be able to live that. I mean, it's an Ice Ring with bulk, so I would expect it to live. It's got decent defenses. Gonna go for the Helping Hand since I do not have the Guts activated yet. The Double Edge is gonna come up. Oh, I thought we saw Return. Into the Earth Ring. Uh, a crit. I don't think that mattered. I would expect an Adamant. But we're probably gonna see Trick Room here, which is fine for me, actually. Yep, we're gonna see the Trick Room. That's actually really good for me. He just set up a free Trick Room for me. Gonna bring out Ludicolo here. However, this Cresselia is going to be such an annoying Pokemon to knock out. I'm going to scald the Kangaskhan and Helping Hand. Or should I Ice Beam the Cresselia? But if he goes for a Sucker Punch onto my Cresselia, I'm kind of screwed. Or I might even want to go for the Trick Room play, expecting him to reverse my Trick Room again. But I don't think he'll go for the Trick Room this time. Unless he switches out into Heatran. A Scald will knock out Kangaskhan at this range, though. Helping Hand's coming out for the Ludicolo. Let's see, Kangaskhan go for Sucker Punch? It did. Into Ludicolo. Okay, so, did not work out as, uh, as well as I wanted. Oh, it's a crit. That one actually might matter, because that means I'm taking more life or damage. I'm probably in Heat Wave range now. Oh, that crit really sucks. Let's see, does Cresselia go for Trick Room? It goes for Trick Room. Now it really depends on how fast this Heatran is, but I would not assume it's a fast Heatran, because if it was a fast Heatran, yeah, Heatran's coming out, it's Trick Room, I doubt it's a fast Heatran, I gotta knock out this Heatran if I want any chance of winning, if he protects here, it's fine, he's actually gonna help me hand his own Heatran, okay, let's see who's faster, <laughs> his Cresselia is faster than my Cresselia, that's a fact, Heat Wave, Ludicolo avoids, but I don't, I think that's game either way. Scald is gonna connect with the with the um with the Heatran. It's gonna pick up the knockout. However, my Pokemon are so badly damaged that I feel like I can't win this. I feel like Ludicolo is in psychic range. Actually, I could Giga Drain. Yeah, I'm gonna Giga Drain. Actually, I'll help being hand Giga Drain. Because this will actually, should give me enough recovery to where I can heal back to live a second. Oh, he's faster. That was a surprise. 
I'm not even a minimum speed Ludicolo. I actually have speed investment. Wow. I'm guessing this Cresselia is like calm nature. Oh, well, that's going to be game year. Unless I get like an ice beam freeze, but I think that's not going to be likely. Ice beam, I don't know. Can a freeze happen? No. That's going to be game. I'm going to forfeit here. There's no reason losing Cresselia. Quite unfortunate. The double edge crit on Earth Ring, I don't think mattered, but the Sucker Punch ended up helping my opponent a lot. Of course, he did miss Heat Wave. But I feel like I might have been able to live the Heat Wave be if Sucker Punch didn't crit anyway. But I guess it didn't really matter in the end with uh, his own Cresselia. So, maybe Earth Ring was not the right call to bring in this battle, but... The reason I didn't want to bring Mawal is I knew he was probably going to bring Heatran, and I thought Amoongus might have been a really big problem. So I thought maybe Ursaring with the Guts, since it avoids the uh, Spore, it could do some heavy damage. But unfortunately, that's not how it works. We're going to find one more battle, and hopefully we can snag a final win for this team. Okay, our second opponent of the day will be Timon, or Timon, I don't know, from Spain. 1698 as in a rating. And wow, this this team looks familiar. I feel like I played this before. I feel like I played this before. We got Amoongus, Edgeslash, Salamence, Blaziken, Thunderous, and Terrakion. So we got quite a ground rate this my opponent has. Of course, Amoongus will be annoying. Of course, um, a lot of things will be annoying. Chandelure is not that great. I doubt he'll bring Terrakion. Unless this was the Roar Terrakion. I'm not sure if it was this team, but I'm pretty sure it was Roar Terrakion. No, no, no. That was it with a Kangaskhan team. Never mind. I think Crystallion Maul is actually a really safe lead. No matter who he leads. Unless he leads Blaziken. But then he would probably be forced to um, bring out Amoongus or Thunderous to really stop the Trick Room. I don't think he's going to bring Especially since Speed Boost is terrible if if you play it here. I feel like Ludicolo... Yeah, Ludicolo actually does pretty well. It hits five of my opponent's Pokemon super effectively. You got an Ice Weakness and a Ground Weakness. Wow. Ice Weakness on the left half. Ground Weakness on the right half. Jeez. So, Cresselia, Mawa, Ludicolo. I'm thinking the last one will be Ursaring. I like the ground coverage. Hariyama doesn't really help against this team, especially Omega Salamence. Chandelure might be nice. Man, I wish I had safety goggles on the Chandelure. Like, Focus Sash, it was the item I ran back in Brooklyn at the 2014 Premier Challenge. Didn't know how it would work. It was like... It wasn't that bad, to be honest. It was, um... I mean, it got me second place. Of course, Focus Sash really didn't help him. Well, Focus Sash helped him... A lot of the cases in that game. Wow, my opponent's running out of time, I think. But, yeah, it was basically... Focus Sash actually did pretty well against that. But I don't think it's working as well now. Especially since a lot of people have not been bringing the leads to counter the Chandelure. So Safety Goggles would have probably been a better item. We're going to see Edge Slash and Thunder Sleeve, which is perfectly fine by me. Against my Mawa and Cresselia. But remember... He's probably going to set up the taunt, and Edgeslash is probably going to go for the attacking move. So, you know what I'm going to do? I think I want to get rid of this Edgeslash so it doesn't do his heavy damage. I'm going to go for the help, or I can knock out this Funders right away, which would be huge. No more hacks. No more hacks. Oh, that's really tempting, but I think I want to get rid of this Edgeslash, especially since it's a wide guard user probably on this team. There's no way he's going for King Shield. Like, why would you go for King Shield? Unless he's a viewer of my videos and he knows I have knockoff Mega Mall. Unless, but very slight chance. So, Helping Hand is going to come out. We're probably going to see the Taunt or Swagger onto Cresselia. It could be Swagger. But we're just going to see the Thunderbolt into the Cresselia slot. Did he try to double target knocking it out? But Helping Hand Knockoff is going to pick up the knockout onto the Edge of Slash. So that was a huge turn one for me. Because I get rid of the Edge of Slash, which is like the bulkiest thing. It's a weakness policy variant. And Cresselia barely took any damage from that Thunderbolt. So I am very satisfied with that. We're probably going to see Blaziken come out, I would assume. 
Amoongus. My opponent must have Salamence in the back. Now, question is, what do I do now? I kind of want to double up on Amoongus. Because Amoongus will be annoying for the Trick Room measure. So you know what? I actually think I'm going to double target the Amoongus. Because Fungus is not a threat. You see how little these Thunderbolts are doing. Well, to Cresselia, if it does to Maul, I might do a little under half. I'd probably assume 40%. Moa might be an important factor, but really, I think that my... Well, it could be Mega Blaziken. It could be Mega Blaziken my opponent has in the back. So he's probably trying to get rid of this Cresselia right away if that is a Mega Blaziken in the back. Just trying to get rid of the threats. He's going to go for the Thunder Wave. He's going for Hacks into Cresselia. Interesting choice. Uh, we're going to go for the Iron Head. Ah, oh, Cresselia gets paralyzed. Not my day. Iron Head's going to connect with the Amoongus. Should do a lot of damage. If I can snag a flinch, it would be nice. Rocky Helmet from the Amoongus. We're going to see the Spore, though, into Mawal. But there is a good thing to this. You might be surprised, but... Now that he has... Well, now that my Crystal is paralyzed, which I kind of don't understand that... Well, it did immobilize me, but now he can't spore me, so I can set up Trick Room, not have to worry, and I'll go for the player of, because I know Maul has to take one turn to guaranteed sleep. He's going to withdraw Amoongus. Blaziken or Salamence? Salamence is going to come out, which is absolutely fine by me, because I have Ice Beam on my Cresselia, and I have the Maul all out. I guess my opponent just really didn't have anything. He's going to go for the Thunderbolt into Maul, understandable, that should do about half now. Yep, it's going to do about half. I'm going to take one turn of Guaranteed Sleep, and we're going to go for that Trick Room. Not bad. Not bad. We're in a pretty nice position here. So, now I'm wondering... Of course, my Maw is intimidated. I don't think I have to really target anything. I feel like Salamence might try to protect here, and Thunderous goes for the Thunderbolt. And Salamence really isn't a threat with Ludicolo, and as long as I trick him up, Amoongus can't spore me. I can go for the Ice Beam later into Salamence, it's Life Orb and knocks out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this Thunderous. Getting rid of this Thunderous will be huge, that means he'll be stuck into Amoongus and uh, Salamence. Amoongus can't do anything to Ludicolo, and as long as I get one Ice Beam off onto Salamence, I'm good here. So Salamence is going to Mega Evolve. Uh, another play my opponent could have made, actually, was switch out the Salamence into Amoongus. That was also a possibility, but probably he's good. Oh, wow, he didn't go for the Protect. Nice. But it really doesn't matter. I don't think Salamence can really knock out my Pokemon. Mawa is going to take a second turn of sleep. Unfortunate, but you know what? I'm fine with that. We're going to see the Thunderbolt into Cresselia. Really trying to get rid of this Cresselia. We're going to see the Earthquake. Okay, understandable. Levitate and the... Earthquake will connect with my Moa. That will pick up the knockout, but that's fine. Uh, now I'll bring out Ursaring. I feel like I'll save Ludicolo for a bit later. Now I kind of feel like just going for the Ice Beam onto Salamence and the Facade into Thunderous. Because I feel... Again, I feel like Salamence is in the threat, but I do not want him to keep going for attacks such as Double Edge. So I'm going to facade this Thunderous, because if he protects, I doubt this Thunderous has Protect. But if he protects one of them or switches out with one of them and goes for Protect with the other, I'm going to get some free damage off. And even if he brings out Amoongus, uh, the Flame Orb will activate and burn my Ursaring so I cannot get Spore, which is really nice. So we'll see what my opponent decides to do. I really doubt he has anything to stop this. I'm really surprised. Does that Thunders not have Taunt? We've seen Thunderbolt, uh, Thunder Wave. It might be Offensive Grass Knot and HP Ice. Or it could have Swagger, but I think he would have went for Swagger because he needed the odds to stop the Trick Room. My opponent is taking quite a while to make his move. He's actually going to withdraw the Salamence, which is fine by me. Knock out this um, Thunderous, and I should be golden. Amoongus is going to come out. Cresselia is paralyzed. Unfortunate. I would have got some free damage. Facade's going to target the Thunderous. This should not knock out. Wow. I thought I would have. 
Let's see, he's probably going to go for Thunderbolt into the Ursaring. Thunderbolt into the Cresselia. So he's really trying to get rid of this Cresselia. Ursaring is going to get burned by the Flame Orb, which is fine. I'll go for the Ice Beam into the Thunders and the Facade into... Do I target the Thunders? Or do I target the Amoongus? I feel like Thunders is the bigger threat. And even if he Rage Powers, I knock out the Amoongus. Um, what does his Thunders do? Thunderbolt, the Cresselia. I still would have to turn a Trick Room and I live the Thunderbolt anyway. So that's not really an option for my opponent. I wonder if Facade can knock out Mega Salamence. I don't think it can. But I should put it... Well, it depends on what the moveset on my opponent's thunder Salamence is and how bulky it is. If it has Double Edge, it'll probably put it where Double Edge knock out, can knock out. I don't even think he knows I'm Rocky Helmet. Ice Beam's going to connect, knock out this Thunders, hopefully. Oh, that's a sliver. Giga Drain's going to come out into the Cresselia. Fine by me, that's fine by me. And Frizzard's going to connect with the Thunders. This will pick up the knockout. Yeah. Alright, so I'm going to take burn damage, but it should be fine. I still have a turn of Trick Room left. Yeah, I still have a turn of Trick Room. Salamence is going to be forced to come out. Now, he did have Earthquake, so he probably does not have Roost. I think I'll Helping Hand Facade? Yeah, I'll Helping Hand Facade the Amoongus. Because I doubt Amoongus is going to protect, and Salamence is most definitely going to go for the Protect. And if he doesn't go for Protect, I don't know what my opponent's thinking right now. But if I can knock out this Amoongus, it's really easy for me to win this game. Because I have Ludicolo in the back. And I... And even if it's... Sal well, here's my theory. Well, I'll, I'll explain it after this turn. The Helping Hand is going to happen. The Salamence is going to protect. Amoongus is not going to protect. That's really good. Let's see. Giga Drain into the... Um, Cresselia. Yeah. It's not going to knock out. Yeah, I still live. And Facade will definitely take out the Amoongus. I mean, Helping Hand Facade. It can knock out Cresselli. It's going to knock out Amoongus, no problem. The Rocky Helmet's going to knock out my Ursaring. Well, not knock out. It's going to do damage, but... Ursaring still hanging in there. The Twisted Dimensions return to normal. Absolutely perfect. I can now go for Trick Room and uh, Facade. And unless he has Rock Slide or something, he really shouldn't be able to knock out both my Pokemon. He's going to have to target one of them. He's going to go for the Double Edge into Ursaring, which is going to knock out Ursaring. Fine by me because you are taking Double Edge Recoil. And Cresselia is paralyzed. <laughs> but that's fine. I'm actually fine with that. I can now bring out Ludicolo. And I can go for the fake out Trick Room, and as long as I can get the Trick Room up this turn, I really should be good. And even if I can't, as long as I'm not paralyzed for like three, for two more turns in a row, I should be good. Fake out and Trick Room. He pretty much can't protect here because he knows he needs to get rid of one of these Pokemon. Well, he can protect, but if Cresselia steps up the Trick Room, my opponent's screwed. And. The reason I'm going for Fake Out Trick Room is just so it guarantees so Ludicolo underspeeds the Salamence, knocks it out with an Ice Beam. If Cresselia is paralyzed this turn, it means he has to double edge one of them. And if he double edges Cresselia, he takes Rocky Helmet, Recoil, Ice Beam will knock it out, especially after this Fake Out now. And if he targets the Ludicolo, the, as long as I'm not paralyzed with Cresselia again, Ice Beam will finish it off. But we are going to get that Trick Room up, and that will ensure me the game. Because this, this Salamence is not going to live a Life Orb Ice Beam from Ludicolo. So just going to go for the double Ice Beam. He has to get like four Protects in a row. And I think a triple Protect is all you can get. If anyone has got a quadruple Protect, I think it's impossible in VGC. Of course, I don't know my facts. Cresselia is going to get paralyzed here, unfortunately. But we are going to get this Ice Beam off and knock out the Salamence, which is absolutely fantastic. Yep, goodbye, Salamans. That will be the game. So, this team, not bad for a Pokemon I Dare You session, especially since I wasn't really a fan of the items and the team composition I had. It scored two victories in the first two videos, then it kept going 1-1 for the last five videos. 
But I think I could have won a bunch of the games if I just didn't screw up. If I had the right item on Cresselia, that really played a big factor. Because if I had Rocky Helmet on Cresselia, I feel like I could have won like three of the games that I lost. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Ursaring and the session of April Pokemon I Dare You, a series that's unique to this channel. So you guys should subscribe and check out the May Pokemon I Dare You, which I'll be taking suggestions for starting well, May 1st, where there will be an upload, where there will be a video upload of this team and all the videos that's been uh, played with this team. So definitely check that out when it comes out. Hope you guys enjoyed this VGC episode. If you guys did, please leave a like down below. Really supports the channel. We are almost at a thousand subscribers, so thank you guys so much again. Uh, check out the rest of my stuff. Check out my social medias down below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. James Speed 1, signing out.